Sometimes some of the people who comment on these videos and articles and podcasts, sometimes they really get my hopes up. Like Mickey Morganfield. I think Mickey's a young lady out of somewhere on the West Coast. Anyway, Mickey really Mickey promised that she compiled a list of murders carried out by pretty white moms and dads, gnarly looking white folks, mass shootings and bombings by Mike by white guys who kind of look like you, Colin, Las Vegas. Tip. Guy points a gun at you. It's not profiling to describe his color. Hope you find a brain. So Mickey was prom I don't know, this it was kind of a mixed message there, but she was promising that she was going to give us a list of all the white people killing all the black people that apparently exist and everybody in America has it except for me and people who watch these videos. So I thought somebody was going to go into their secret vault, pull it out, so we could all go back to leading normal lives and not worry about this. What we thought was fair, a fairy tale turns out it's true. Black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything. Anyway, spoiler alert, Mickey, turns out Mickey didn't have that list after all. Then we run into the same kind of thing from Mike Fairbanks. Now, Mike tells us he's a teacher down in Atlanta. And Mike tells us in several tweets that we got the whole thing wrong. He's in his 25-year career as a teacher. He's never seen any kind of evidence to, to let him think that there's any difference between black crime and white crime. Never. Quote, maybe it's because black on white crime is rare, but white on black crime has been going on for more than 300 years in North America and throughout this nation's entire history. Don't act like we whites are innocent and underrepresented. Oh, I love that. I love those. I love those words. We're underrepresented, underserved. These words always pack a lot more meaning in them than the pe what the people think who use them. So anyway, Mike's a teacher. He can't figure it out. So here's a question for you, Mike. Here's a little story out of Atlanta. Now, when I saw the story, my I thought, well, I'm going to look into this because. Uh, this is the kind of thing in Atlanta that you would typically find done by a black person. It's a black on white crime. This is not a white thing in Atlanta. No, that's not a conclusion. That's a hypothesis. So we don't report hypotheses around here. We're not MSNBC or CNN. We look at stories, and if they're, you know, if 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 they if we can back up what we're going to say, we report it as such. And so here's my question for Big Mike. Here's my question for that other chick, whatever her name is. In Atlanta, is this whole black on white crime thing out of proportion? In Atlanta, is black murder wildly out of proportion? Is it? Let's check. The search is widening for the person who shot and killed a man waiting for his wife outside of a store. 73-year-old Jack Hoff is a well-known businessman and philanthropist in Hall County. Channel 2's Tom Regan is live at the store on Park Hill Drive. That's where the shooting happened. And Tom, police say they found crucial evidence there. Yeah, they did, Javita, but they're not re ready yet to tell us exactly what that evidence is. Take a look behind me here. Within the last 20 minutes, a team of forensic investigators and detectives arrived back on the scene at this CVS store, they're looking for any bit of evidence, anything, perhaps an empty shell casing, anything that they may have missed following the deadly shooting here last night. A businessman gunned down in his car as he waited for his wife. He was a great friend and uh, just a wonderful person. It's, it's just horrible. Close friends of Jack Huff are numb, struggling to make sense of his sudden violent death while out on an errand with his wife, Gail. It's just kind of devastating. It's such a tragic. Police say this grainy security photo shows the gunman passing in front of the door moments before he tried to rob Huff and ended up shooting him in the chest. He died minutes after arriving at the hospital. The chief told me he grieves for the man's wife, now widow. I can't imagine what it would be like to walk out of that business, find citizens rendering aid to my spouse, and that's what breaks my heart. And that's what keeps me up and driven to find this man. Huff served in the Air Force and went on to become the king of food courts, his first at North Georgia Premium Outlets. 
His development spanned malls and airports across the country. Extremely successful. He had a great business model. Friends say he also had a generous heart. There were some local charities and junior achievement. He gave a lot of money to local charities. They say at age 73, Huff was semi-retired and looking forward to spending more time with his wife and family. The chief suspects the gunman had help, perhaps a getaway driver. There are people that know who attacked this man, and uh, I hope they can't sleep until they come and, and let us know what they know. Prosecutors have charged 24-year-old DeMarvin Bennett in the murder of businessman Jack Huff. Well, sorry, Mike. You might have to go back to the drawing board, Mike, uh, because the people that killed this guy, well, maybe they weren't students in your school, but they were students in somebody's school. Please, sir. I want some more. And they didn't just pick up a gun yesterday and decide they're going to go around killing old white people uh, at the spur of a moment. Yeah, Mike. So here's your here's your problem, Mike, the teacher from Atlanta. You've been a teacher for 25 years. In your school district, are black children disciplined and uh, punished? And do they get grades wildly out of proportion below white people? Is that a fact? If so... Then, then by your reasoning and by the reasoning of uh, Obama, the people of the Obama administration who ran this program for 10 years, the only reason for any kind of disparity is white racism. And so, Mike, is, there, is, there, is that a problem in your district? Are you participating and perpetuating this white racism? Because you can't have it both ways. And you're not allowed to come back and say, well, uh, you know, I'm not of my class. No, you are part of a system of white racism by your own admission. And what are you doing about it? You're just showing up and collecting a check every day, despite the fact that you are participating in a racist system that systematically keeps the brothers down for no reason whatsoever. And, and looking at people like me and other people who look at that and go, well, Mike, uh, I think the problem we have with black children in school is not white racism, but that black children behavior is wildly out of proportion. That's why they're suspended. That's why they don't get good grades. You afraid to say that, Mike? Because when you work in Atlanta schools for 25 years and you come back and say, you don't find any, you can't find any evidence that there's any difference between black kids and white kids and behavior and performance in schools, public schools? If that's the case, Mike. And I congratulate you for achieving your goal because you have dedicated your entire life to one thing, one thing only, and that is not making the black kids angry.